Know thyself is an exhortation to leaders going back eons. The ancient Greek philosopher Socrates reportedly used the phrase to question how a leader could possibly lead others if they cannot lead themselves, or more particularly, how could they know others if they did not know themselves? Similarly, Sun Tzu, a great general and philosopher of ancient China, noted, Know yourself and you will win all battles. Bennis made an important observation about learning leadership from leaders, and that is, while it is possible to use leaders as role models and to try to emulate their inspirational characteristics and to take on board the advice they give you and the learning they expose you to, ultimately, they cannot teach you how to become yourself. Ultimately, you need to reflect upon how all of these things integrate with who you are now and who you want to be in the future. Bourdieu noted that we are the sum of our experiences, and the ways we interact with the world are informed by these experiences. This being the case, we need to understand what the sum of our experiences equates to. The mechanism that is required is self-reflection. Bennis and Goldsmith note that self-reflection can take multiple forms. Formally reflecting upon previous experiences, particularly successes and failures, and what this revealed about strengths, weaknesses, values, and relationships. This can be through a reflective journal, a contemplative retreat, or discussing a particular experience with a trusted friend or colleague. Seeking broad feedback about your behaviours from followers, peers, superiors, friends and relatives. Knowing how others perceive you, and particularly where they perceive you differently from how you perceive yourself, will provide greater context for self-reflection. Vicarious learning from others who have written about leadership, from examining the context and the consequences of other leaders' actions, we can reflect on how we might have done things, or alternatively, how we might integrate positive lessons into our future plans. Likewise, reflecting on theoretical understandings of leadership provides us with benchmarks or milestones against which we can question our relative strengths and weaknesses. Finally, being reflexive in practice, or self-critical, that is to say, being conscious of cause and effect in behaviours and its circular relationship. In this case, tracking what you knew and believed and how this manifests in what you say and do and how this in turn affects what you understand about yourself now. Goleman Boyatzis and McKee, as well as Ket de Vries, both argue the critical role played by self-awareness in emotional intelligence and transformational leadership. For example, Goldman and his colleagues argue that without self-awareness it would be impossible to understand one's emotions and the effect they have on others. Self-awareness allows people a realistic view of themselves, neither overly self-critical nor naively hopeful. Rather, they are honest with themselves, about themselves. Likewise, Ket de Vries argues that self-awareness is the first step in becoming an effective leader. Since, people who don't know themselves get locked unwittingly into dysfunctional behaviour patterns and are poor judges of other people. Before we turn to examining some practical tools for self-understanding, it is worth citing Adair, who noted the unusual dynamic and perhaps even tension in the field of leadership development between the value of personal experience and the experience of others in academic theory. Learning about leadership happens when sparks of relevance jump in between experience or practice on the one hand and principles or theory on the other hand. One without the other tends to be sterile. It is a common fallacy that leadership is only learned through experience. Experience only teaches the teachable. Leadership can only be learned by experience and reflection or thought. Personal Development Plans, or PDPs, are a practical mechanism for integrating the tools of critical self-reflection. Austin, Marini and Desrochus warn, though, that the undertaking of a PDP requires an ideal type of individual who knows how to self-reflect, is open to change, interested in their development, and knows how to organise themselves and their environment to support learning. Bossart, Seegers and Gesch Sailors report that PDPs can be characterised as follows provides an overview of the competencies and characteristics of the person as they are now and the competencies and characteristics they plan to work on in the future, is composed and written by the person themselves, although effective PDPs for leaders specifically include a range of tools that examine key leadership competencies, is used as the basis for self-reflection as well as reflection with coaches, mentors and trusted others, serves as a decision-making tool 
from planning an individual training program to assessing career and personal life goals. Typically, a PDP will require the leader to undertake several assessments that are designed to identify key personal traits and leadership competencies. Comprehensive PDPs undertaken by individuals who have a genuine concern for self-understanding and improvement have been shown to be an effective way to know thyself and to become a more effective leader.